Hello my darlings! Another day, another book review! Now like I said in my last video, I am reviewing all of John Green's books. I'm going backwards from his most recent book to his earliest book. So I started with The Fault in Our Stars. The next book I'm going to review is going to be Paper Towns. But in between his books, I'm going to read other things just to kind of have some variety and break up the monotony of reading the same author. And there's just a lot of other books I've read this summer that I want y'all to read and that I think you'd really enjoy. Like today's book. Today's book is Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. I first discovered this book on a list on Tumblr of books about Asian American characters and most likely written by Asian American authors. And I read this one. Basically its plot is a cross between Pitch Perfect and She's the Man. And She's the Man is one of my favorite movies, so immediately I read the description. I'm like, I'm down. Whatever else happens in this book, I am down for this. And it's a very earnest, very funny book. It follows very closely the plot line almost of She's the Man, but with a couple of other extra details added in there. The main character is Chinese American girl Jordan Sun. She's from a poor immigrant family in San Francisco and she got a scholarship to go to this very prestigious performing arts high school called Kensington Blaine School for the Performing Arts if that's... wait... <laughs> double checking. Yes, Kens Kensington Blaine Boarding School for the Performing Arts. Sorry. And she is an alto two in the theater program. She's also a very tall Chinese girl, so it's very hard for her to fit parts in this theater program. So at the beginning of the book, she had been shut out for the third straight year of the musical because it's just very hard to make her fit in. So she's just languishing in this, like, I'm not good enough, what am I doing here? And she decides to look for alternate ways of being able to perform. Turns out the all-male octet a cappella group, the Kensington Sharpshooters, needs a tenor one. I don't know what, I don't know how well y'all know music, but alto twos, true alto twos with as deep as their voices can go, fit tenor one very well. So she decides to disguise herself as a boy and audition for this group. And she disguises herself as a boy named Julian Zhang, who in the book is a cousin of hers from Seattle, but that's not important. And by all miracles, she gets in. <laughs> now truth be told, she did not expect to get this far, but now that she's in, she's like, okay. And so she goes into this group every day for an hour and sings with these boys. And I love, love, love all of these boys. They all have such sweet, distinct personalities. There's Trav, who is the like the arranger of the group, and he's very strict and very by the book, and like, we have to do it this way. There's Mama, who is, his name is Theodore, but they call him that because he's basically the mom friend of the group, and his roommate John Cox, who's a little cocky, but he's just hiding a romantic's heart, and he's so sweet. There's some background freshmen named um, Marcus and Eric, and they're, they're sweet kids, they're good boys. And then there's Nihal, who is a Sikh guy, and I love the fact that they kind of put him in here. He's, he's very sweet and he's smart, and he's very level-headed. He balances Jordan out enough to where she feel, starts to feel really comfortable there. And then there's the president of the Sharpshooters, who I blame him for now me loving this name forever, Isaac Nakahara. He's, he's bright and, you know, he's, he's jokey. He's definitely the kind of guy that I like, so immediately I was like, good, I like you. And Jordan takes a liking to him as well especially after she broke up with her boyfriend of two years over the summer and that's something that really weigh weighs down on her in the book and getting to be part of this group is her learning to let that go and learn that she can determine who she is she doesn't have to fit a certain mold of masculinity and femininity which femininity which is one of the big themes of this book is what does it mean to be a boy or a girl because jordan has to do both during the day when she's in her theater classes she's jordan's son but when she when she's with the sharps she's julian jang and she starts to realize that maybe guys and girls aren't that different after all <laughs> what i really applaud miss redgate for doing is 
showing the human side of these boys, that they are just as awkward and anxious and insecure and have just as much family pressure and anxieties in their lives as Jordan does. Jordan's parents are trying to pressure her to leave Kensington Blaine and go back to San Francisco because they're having a hard time making ends meet. The only, like I said, the only reason Jordan's even there is because she's a scholarship student. And I like that, you know, Miss Redgate drew these parallels between all these different characters and how they're all kind of going through the same thing that Jordan is going through and she starts to realize maybe they're not that different from me. In the book, the sharpshooters also have a rivalry with the other all-male acapella group on campus, the New York Minuets. And what she addresses is how this rivalry is so rooted in toxic masculinity because the person the dean of music of the school of music there's five schools at Kensington Blaine that could tell you what they all are right now but theater and music are the two big ones he is the father of the leader of the New York Minuets uh, Connor Kasky and it really shows how just toxic masculinity and a very old world, like old money family idea of toxic masculinity, how it can just beat you down and how it's not good for anybody. And I like that she was not afraid to really show that. And I hope I'm not spoiling anything. It'll come into, you'll realize how much it comes into play if you choose to read the book. The one thing I felt that was dealt with very well in particular, and I don't feel bad talking about this because this is in the description of the book, is Jordan coming to terms with the fact that she's bisexual. She gets a crush on a guy and on a girl in the course of the book. And what I like best about it is that it's not like this earth-shattering revelation. The thought had crossed her mind before, but she had been in a relationship with a guy, so she just hadn't had to really think about it. And now she does. And it's not this terrifying thing, it's something where it happens. The realization dawns on her, and she just sits back for a second and she's like, okay, everything else makes sense now. And then she moves on. That she, This whole book is about Jordan finding her identity, and I like that when she discovers this other facet of her identity, like any normal person, she's like, oh, okay. That makes more sense now. Now I make more sense to myself. And she goes on the rest of her life because in this book there are other problems at hand. But I like the fact that she sits and she's okay with it. Because I feel like with a clumsier author, it would have been it would have been handled that way. It would just be constantly sitting in the back of her mind. There's another character, two other characters actually, who are part of the LGBT community, and I like the way that plotline is handled as well, and that's something I don't want to spoil for you, but it's... I like the way it's handled and the way they talk about sexuality, and the fact that it's just a fact of life here. Like, if I would have written this, I would have not written this nearly as deftly. So I do applaud Miss Redgate for just a very kind way she handled Jordan's discovery of her own identity. Part of why she learns to like herself in this book, because she starts off not liking herself at all, is because she starts to see that, like I said, guys and girls really aren't that different. We're all kind of afraid of the same things. So all in all, this book is just very smart and deftly handled. The thing that really frustrates me about Riley Redgate is that she just graduated college. She's only like a year or two older than me and has already written something this good. <laughs> I'm like, I wish. I just wish. But it is. It's honest and the boys, they're all very different, but they're smart and they're sweet and I like watching Jordan come into herself. So if you're looking for a really good coming of age novel, I suggest Noteworthy. If, and if you're a big fan of either Pitch Perfect or She's the Man or both, I suggest it to you. Now I want to hear what you think. Are there any other books like that I should read? Anybody by Any books by authors of color? Because I'm trying to get more <laughs> variation in my reading. If there's anything at all, I'd love to hear from you. And if not, don't forget to click like and subscribe. All my social media and my actor website are down in the description. And I'll see you later, my darlings. I hope you have a nice day.